is Mark Zuckerberg dumping the metaverse? Uh, some people think so. Some people are actually uh, saying that this is a sign that of things to come. Uh, a lot of people are saying it in uh, this article here from the street. Mark Zuckerberg has dumped the metaverse for his newest obsession. Uh, an interesting article uh, talking about uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, moving on a couple things. It says, after spending the better part of two years raving about the metaverse on every platform, he could, he could like an obsessed maniac, meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg has quietly buried the thing he once claimed was the future of the tech industry. Um, I think that's probably a little uh, over-exaggerated. I don't think he's buried it. But while it's understandable that Zuckerberg didn't want to publicly state that he'd made an error in judgment, he's suddenly gone all hard eyed over the biggest new thing in the tech world and his latest hyper fixation has a lot of people worried uh, sounds like he could be doing something terrible the thing of course is ai well that's not shocking uh, and the promise of what it could become uh, but with many of Meta's top execs now refocusing on artificial intelligence, investors and analysts alike are concerned that this is just another wild goose chase that's caught Zuck's fancy. Uh, and here they quote uh, an analyst uh, say, uh, saying, you know, keep an eye on Zuckerberg's newfound love with all things AI. It seems that the year of efficiency, this is them critiquing him uh, with the moves he's been making within Meta uh, is winding down. We made it to April and a name change to Met AI. Uh, Metai, I guess, uh, our best guess is now possible. So there's a little cheeky, a little tongue in cheek there, a little, little clap back at, at Mark Zuckerberg for the moves he's making. You know, everyone's upset with the, you know, widespread layoffs he's been having, but, you know, it depends on who you ask and who you talk to. You know, a lot of these layoffs that these tech companies have been going through, a lot of people are saying that, uh, there's a lot of people in these organizations that are not really doing much of anything. And it doesn't help when you've got, uh, reels and, and, um, uh, different types of people that work in these organizations, uh, you know, uh, sharing their typical workday. I'm using air quotes here. And, you know, it shows them going to a restaurant or going to get coffee or ice cream and, you know, doing yoga in the park. And then, you know, it, and then like, you know, one meeting and the rest of the day is just them, uh, you know, planning. I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, they haven't done the best job of creating the image of actually working uh, to uh, people that, that wonder and, uh, so maybe it is true. Who knows? Obviously, the company is still functioning with the level of layoffs they've been having uh, to have more uh, profitability. But I don't think a lot of people really respect just how much, uh, you know, it, let me say this. It makes sense that this man is switching up and, and focusing more on AI. He has to do it. There is an AI race uh, between all tech companies because what people are not really getting about these AI platforms and what these and what these things do is that the level of data collection uh, that is going to take place is going to be way more than social media ever captured. It's unprecedented. The more people interact with these things, the more they ask it questions, the more they talk to it, the more they work it into their everyday lives, into their everyday jobs, uh, is it's going to collect so much more data and uh, so much different kinds of data uh, that has now become like the valuable commodity for a lot of these companies and a lot of these organizations. Um, and you're, the people are going to willingly hand it over as they have conversations with it. Because really, what every marketer wants and what everybody wants to understand, and and you know, no matter what you're looking at this from, no matter you know if the person has an agenda or they're trying to sell you something, what they're really looking to do is they're really looking to understand how the mind works of the person they're trying to reach, how the mind works, and what they're thinking and what they're feeling, uh, and and once you know that and understand that, which is what these a lot of a lot of these algorithms are built upon, then you can you know get them to do what you want them to do. Whether you look at that as nefarious in nature, it definitely can be nefarious in nature. I'm not trying to dismiss it, but there's some people that just look at it as, you know, well, these companies are just trying to market products and, uh, you know, they don't find it as disturbing. Uh, but, you know, I don't really know how you could go through the past couple of years and not look at uh, how things have played out uh, and not see at least be a little bit perturbed at, uh, you know, the way the world's going and what's happening in the world. Uh, you have to at least acknowledge that there is uh, and a very weird and inverted uh, uh, practice being taken on some of these social media platforms that has been exposed. And so you, I don't, I don't understand how you wouldn't be, but I just don't think going back to what I was saying earlier, that, you know, it makes total sense that Mark Zuckerberg 
would stop what he's doing and focus on AI. Because I don't think a lot of people really understand the level at which uh, these uh, chat AI robots that do various different things like chat GPT, I don't think they understand the level at which this is going to impact society yet. It's it's still new for a lot of people. And a lot of people have just been easily dismissing it as some goofy thing on the internet. And they're when they think about it or talk about it, they're thinking about some, you know, kid online who's having a hard time finding a girlfriend and he's falling in love with his AI. And it's like, look, you, you don't you don't get what is happening here. I mean, uh, just as an example, and there's millions of examples, this is just scratching the surface as I talk to friends of mine uh, in tech uh, and that are doing tech, you know, the, what I'm hearing this thing is doing and what I'm hearing uh, that different ones are doing and being designed to do uh, is insane. It's insane. But here's an example here. So this is a conversation I had with ChatGPT just a few minutes ago. I said, can you rewrite my paragraphs if I give them to you to make them read at a university grade level? And, you know, basically I said, yes, I can definitely assist that with you in rewriting. Just, you know, send it to me. I'll do my best. And so here's my paragraphs here. And these are not really paragraphs. I acknowledge that these are, you know, these don't fit in at all. I just basically was typing out just my thoughts. You know, we already live in a world where mainstream media has been called out uh, on posting and reporting stories that were completely fabricated or even on some of the choices where they decided not to report something at all. Have you noticed? If you're... So I say all this and then it rewrote it. And I'm not going to lie. It rewrote it pretty good. I mean, it reads pretty, it, it reads, it reads very well. Um, it's, it's definitely rewrote it in a way that's beyond my level of writing. And it, it gives me, it, it gives my writing a, uh, a, a feel to it. Um, a script that feels, uh, like I'm, uh, you know, uh, at a higher level of expressing my thoughts than I was in today's world. Mainstream media has been criticized for sharing and dismantling or dis disseminating uh, stories that were entirely made up, as well as for deliberately withholding information from the public. It is not uncommon to observe friends and family members who have wholeheartedly accepted these narratives, even after they have been exposed as inaccurate or false. Perhaps you have experienced situations at work where colleagues are discussing topics that you know to be false due to an article they had read or heard that flowed and sounded way better than what I wrote originally. And then did that in a matter of seconds, in a matter of seconds. So uh, things, softwares like Grammarly and all these other softwares that scan your documents and then you have to go in and retype them yourself. I'm just wondering how much more I could do if I just typed out my full essay, my full script, whatever it is I'm working on. And I told this thing to rewrite it at a, what I say, at a university grade level, you know, a high end, you know, uh, level and and, it, and how much more it would affect I, I just don't think people fully understand what you're actually capable of doing here uh this thing is is crazy i've had multiple random conversations with it um some on scripture some on other stuff just to see what it's saying and it's it's uh it's insane what it can do resume building i mean it's crazy what this thing can do and and i and i'm i represent just the common you know know nothing person and, you know, the friends that I have that are in the, that are doing tech right now, the, you know, the friends that I know that are programmers and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, they're entering stuff into the thing. And that thing is like writing code for them, but it's writing code for them in, in ways where it's, they're, they're, they're typing in the code that they have written and understood this is the best way I can explain it. And they're telling it that they need the code to make whatever it is that they want to do a certain thing that they're not able to figure out. And the thing is figuring it out for them and plugging it away. I mean, so the shakeup that's coming, you know, is, you know, it's, it's not, I think in some ways the, in the immediate sense, let's say in the immediate sense, the media is making it sound like we're entering into the book of revelation over this stuff. And, you know, I can totally see it's, I can totally see it going there, but in the immediate sense, what this is going to do is shake up industries like colleges, universities, uh, writers, uh, script writing, videos, content online. I mean, you know, articles, news stories, it, this thing is going to completely alter the way people do things. Uh, as far as interacting with it for, you know, uh, I mean, I've seen people <laughs> write <laughs> resignation letters. I mean, just, it's endless. It's crazy. And I don't think people fully understand how much this stuff is, is able to do and how, how quickly it's going to spread like rapid fire. The more people experiment with it, you know, the more people talk about it, even if they talk about it in a negative sense, the more people are going to get curious. And as you get curious, you're going to keep 
interacting with it and it's going to keep go, going and going and going. And Mark Zuckerberg, being the CEO of Facebook, sees this. He's not stupid. You know, you can't call him stupid. I mean, he can make mistakes like any other human being, but he sees it and he's going after it. And it makes sense, especially with all of his other tech buddies going after it as well. If your business model is to collect data and sell it, then you would want the most efficient thing at collecting data, even if you could capture, you know, 5% of that business, even if he's so far behind, beyond, behind the mark that there's other people that are going to beat him to it. If you can make something that's somewhat efficient, you have the skill set, you have the, the workforce to make it, you would make it. I mean, the metaverse thing that he was designing specifically, because there's other metaverse stuff that's going on that people don't understand and, and, and it's making big waves. It's making huge waves. And the metaverse term even of itself is something that he coined. It's it, There's just something so far beyond what Mark Zuckerberg is doing. I, people don't really fully comprehend that yet. But, what, but, but his personal thing he's been making in Facebook is not, is not that hard to switch gears just because of a name change. Just because of a name change. They, it's not that hard. He can switch gears like that and still be running metaverse, but it, it's that stuff isn't slowing down. That stuff is speeding up. And the changes and, and stuff that's going on there is going to continue coming. So yeah, obviously this this article is a little salty at his changes. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not the obviously no one's the biggest fan of these social media companies. I'm not trying to defend the man, but you know, I mean, there's massive layoffs going on. Uh, it's just it's interesting to me that these companies are finding it they're finding themselves capable of laying off the amount of workforce that they're laying off and and continuing to be proficient and efficient in in their products. Like it's not like you logged on to Facebook lately and it's been any worse than it's been in the past. I mean, it's worse in different ways, but as far as the technology itself working and functioning, I mean, it's the same it's been for years. And there's, these amount of layoffs are going on behind the scenes. So inevitably, you got to ask yourself, well, then what the heck were these people doing all day long? And what, what were their purposes for? And, you know, even uh, Elon Musk, you know, passed a comment to, to Tucker Carlson. God rest his soul. I'm joking. Totally joking. Uh, um saying, you know, well, you don't need 80% of your workforce after you laid off, I think they said somewhere close to 80% of Twitter's workforce. You don't need all those people when you're not, you know, trying to track people and control them. Essentially is what he's saying. I'm, I'm jacking that quote up, but you get what I'm saying. So yeah, very interesting. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, yeah, and I will catch you guys in the next one.